Welcome back. This is part two of a video series that I started to show how I decoupage clear glass vases and turn them into beautiful works of art that would make excellent Christmas gifts or, you know, a gift at any time of the year, but especially Christmas, or to, you know, just make for your home. And so in part two, I'm going to be discussing the concept, the decoration concept of how I go about choosing my motifs and my backgrounds and, and the decoration, everything that I'm going to put on the vase. And then in part three, we will start actually applying the various decorations to a vase itself. So, I hope you'll stay with me the whole series. Please watch the entire videos that I make on this process because I will be sharing tips and idea, design ideas, do's and don'ts and things along the way. And so, if you only watch a few minutes of it, you're not going to get any of that training. Anyway, so, let's begin. I have made myself for this one a little... Um, a little outline of what I wanted to cover and in hopes that I do a good enough job giving you enough guidance at this point to go ahead and get started. So if you haven't watched part one, part one was my discussion of the vases. I showed some examples that I've made and talk about what type of vases are best to use and other th tools and supplies that you'll need to be able to make them, particularly if you want to make larger vases. And so this is just my process. You don't have to do it this way and uh, follow along what I do. But if you like what I do, it certainly is a viable way of going about it and it's very professional. It is time consuming, I will warn you that. It is time consuming, but oh boy, it is so satisfying when you get one made. Anyway, so let's talk about design and concept and how I go about choosing mine and the things I think about. And so the glass vase that I'm going to use in this demonstration is this. It is um, larger than I recommend that you start with. I, I recommend you start with a smaller one, you know, to get the technique under your belt and not invest a lot of expense in your substrate. This is 11 and a half inches tall which translates to 29 centimeters and the diameter the outside diameter is five and three quarter inches or roughly 14 and a half centimeters the inside dimension which you need to know if you're making a stand to hold it on while you while you decorate it. The inside of this is five and three eighths inches, or roughly thir about thirteen and a half centimeters. Now, what I like about these taller vases, if you can see. This has a really thick lip to it, and that reflects the depth of the glass. And the reason that's important is the the thinner that is, the you know the more breakable it is. And this is uh, almost a quarter of an inch wide, not quite a little more than an eighth of an inch. Anyway, it's a nice good thickness and I know it's going to be very sturdy and so that's what you want to get if you're going to go into the, a larger size. Make sure it's a nice thick one. Obviously, the thicker the glass, the more expensive it will be, but 
you don't want to go to all the time and effort to decorate a vase this size or even larger and just have it break on you because it's just too delicate. So keep that in mind. All right, now I have some imagery that I think I will probably use um, on this. And you want to use imagery that that covers most of the height of your vase. Because if you don't, it's just going to feel kind of lost and it's just not it's not going to feel right. It will not be good design. So you want to have something that comes up about in this area. And so that's why I have chosen this as a potential image. You see it's quite large. This is from a magazine and I plan to put a border top and bottom. So you need to know beforehand if you're going to use a border top and bottom or just the top you can use a image that's a little bit shorter but if you don't plan on putting a border there then for instance, if I was not going to put a border on, this would be a little too short for me. I would leave way too much space above here. And so it would not be a contestant for this size of a vase unless I had borders. So this would be one, one side and then you want to pick a secondary image for the back side that has this same color palette and that feels good, looks good, and feels good with this one. So I'm going to take this off and kind of show you these flat so you can see them better. And so I have this as a potential and this as the opposite side. Let me kind of turn this to get the glare off. These magazine images uh, have a nice sheen to them, but it's hard to show them in a video. So these two, I felt color-wise and feeling-wise, look good together. Now, of course, this one is taller, and this one has the top of the hat is, you know, was the top of the sheet. And so there's a straight line there. And so I wouldn't want to glue this down as my motif without putting a border there that would cut across there so that it looks like the border is hiding part of the hat instead of the hat being missing. I don't care for straight lines. And so, but you, you know, when you get into large sizes, you often wind up with straight lines on one side or the other because it's filling the entire page. And that's what I have here. I have a straight line here, which I don't care for, a straight line here, which I don't care for, and then down here, I also have two straight lines, but not as tall, this one here and this one here. And so I will be doing, assuming I use these two ladies on this vase, I will be doing things to cover over those straight lines. At the bottom there will be borders, at the top there will be a border. The border will take care of this straight line automatically, but I will need to do something to, you know, soften these cut edges. I just don't care for them. I much prefer a, you know, a curvature type side to an image. Now, in addition to this, you know, obviously these two images are not going to cover the whole vase from front to back. And so I always wind up 
using some sort of connective type of imagery. Maybe it'll be this, maybe it'll be something else by time I <coughs> excuse me, by time I finish up. But you can see how uh, an image like that put in between my major motifs helps connect. I mean, this will help draw the eye around the vase to this image over here. And so that's the type of thing I'm looking for. Now, most of the time in the past, I have used fussy cut jewelry, large jewelry pieces that I have used to connect the front and the back or to even cover up some of the straight edges and things that I don't care for. And I may do that with this or not. I'm not fully decided yet what I'm going to use, but these are strong contenders. They are quite a bit different from what I've done in the past, and that's one reason I like them. Now, I have some other contenders that I might wind up choosing instead. For instance, this lovely lady and this lovely lady look beautiful together. And their faces, of course, are much larger, and I do like that. And I, but I will, um, if I tent, if I decide to use them, I will cut out and get rid of the background and do my best to cut around her hair and come back down, because you do want the background that you choose to show on your vase, and so you don't want to just glue, you know, something like this down. The same goes with this one. I would fussy cut along her shoulder here and then, you know, give some, um, you know, uh, curvature to her hair. She has a bun up here that is cut off uh, right there. So that will need to butt up against a border to make that not look like uh, it was done that way. And then, you know, just cut, fussy cut around here and um, this sort of just, uh, it's a little bit difficult to decide what to do with this because the hair blends in so much with the background. But I think that I could work with that and cut it out nice enough. And if I was not happy with a side or a place where I cut into an image, I can either redo it or you know, glue another image, maybe a piece of jewelry or something over that area to hide that. So these are contenders for the vase. And then I have uh, a third set. And I have these two images. I believe this is so one of the queens of England. Only the name escapes me now. I think this is her as well. It's just a, you know, a different shot of her. And, but you see how the colors coordinate from one to the other. And so this would make a very con con cohesive vase. And I just love all of the intricate jewelry and, and uh, decoration that uh, she has on. And uh, here, this would be easy to cut out of the black background, come up around, cut around her crown and back, and include the scepter, and on down around. So these are very strong contenders. It's not going to matter to me which set I wind up using, because I like all three. And I have two more vases that I could make out of the other two that uh, don't get chosen in this round. So this, these images are very consistent with a lot of the imagery that I've used in the past. So that would make a nice set with other ones. These are a little more modern. She, of course, is very modern comparatively speaking. And this is a painting, but this is a painting as well. So anyway, those are my three choices, and isn't it interesting that they all have wound up having pretty similar color palette. 
so I will have a decision made by by um, video number three and proceed with making the vase which will be in the next segment so now here is some Japanese rice paper and I talked about rice paper in my last video and someone asked well, where can you get it and of course you can get rice paper probably it's available in most art stores uh, some might carry a good deal of it my local store does carry a good deal and that's where I got this but um, you know if you can't don't have an art store near you I'm sure you could get it online uh, from Amazon I'm not talking about this particular sheet but just rice paper in general but bear in mind you don't have to use rice paper in your decoupage. I like rice paper because I find it to be more flexible and so I can kind of maneuver it and um, it's also beautiful paper but just the texture of it is a little more versatile to work with than say wrapping paper or just regular paper. Of course a person can tear paper up into small bits and pieces and decoupage with that and I've seen people do that. I, I use the strip method which I will show you as we get going. But in this, so I will more than likely use this paper for the inside of the vase. I haven't decided yet whether I will put in the imagery in there. The vase is rather small diameter and the smaller it is, the it's just not worth going to the time and trouble to put imagery in there because it's just so hard to see, period. But I do like to cover the inside with paper of some kind to, you know, give it a different color from what's on the outside. Plus, by doing the inside, you hide all of the cut marks and or, or maybe some glue or, you know, other types of things that you don't want to have seen. Those are not going to be seen from, from the inside, which would then normally show the back, the back of what's on the front of the vase, if you follow me. And so by first covering the inside with a background paper, it will be impossible to see any flaws or, you know, maybe mistake or whatever that you might uh, eventually do on the front because you have covered the back and it will not never be seen. So that's another reason why I like to at least cover the inside with paper. All right, now I did talk about the colors and, and I think that's really important. You want to be consistent. Now, you know, maybe you're thinking of using flowers on the front of your vase and that's okay. I tend not to do flowers because I didn't want flowers on the outside of a vase that I put flowers in, if that makes sense. That's just something that I think about. It might not be important to you, and if not, doing flowers on the front is a you know wonderful idea, and you should find imagery very easy to find that will please you. But I, I just feel like I want a different subject matter on the outside of my vases given that I plan to put flowers or greenery inside the vase when I'm all done. Okay, we talked about borders or not. All right, now when we get to actually making them, if you saw video number one, I showed you the type of, of uh, stand that I make to put my vases on. 
and just let me explain that because when you're making them you want you're going to be putting an acrylic top coating when you're all done and you're going to want if it's going to drip at all you want it to drip from the top down to well from the base of the vase down to the uh, the uh, opening of the vase and so you want it to drip down this way so that you'll in the end be cutting off any excess paper that's overhanging and you wouldn't be able to do that here if you if you had the vase upright so you're going to be working upside down and it's very important to remember that at all times that when you go to put an image on the vase you don't want to just you know I mean the tendency will be you're, you're gonna want to put it right side up and glue it that way but if you do that it's going to be upside down <laughs> when you're all done okay so here's the vase if I made that mistake and I did make that mistake I confessed I did make that mistake on one of the vases I made earlier when I was making smaller vases and I was very very disappointed by the time I discovered I had done that it was too late to pull anything off and so that vase can only be used as an upside down stand of some kind anyway so remember you know I have seen some people that that do things uh, with the vase standing right side up but um, I don't work that way and I think that you'll be more pleased with your end product if you work on a stand whether you have something in your home already that will it needs to be taller than your vase and it needs to be able to fit inside your vase if you don't have something like that then you're going to need to make a stand and I go into that in video you know part one so be sure I will put a link to part one in the description box so you can find it easily but if you haven't seen that one you might want to watch that first before going further so you will be working with it upside down and so now the first thing you'll want to do and need to do is decide what you're going to do with the bottom because you're going to be gluing paper over the bottom all the way around and so you don't want anyone to look down in it and see all that uh, mess that you will make down there so what you want to do is is you want to cover the bottom in some way before you do anything else that's number one in the process decide what you're going to do with the bottom now I have painted the bottom with acrylic paint uh, you could use you know oil paints or anything that is um, non-transparent so I've done that but I've also cut out a circular design the size of my base and then glued that on so that whatever I later then come and put over the uh, sides isn't going to show from the inside it will because you treated and decorated the bottom first everything else will go on the back side of your bottom so then when you look through it and see it after it's all done you'll see whatever decoration you originally started with on the bottom and you won't see any of the mess that eventually gets put on when you're working on the sides I hope that makes sense so you'll need a piece of paper or fabric or um, be ready to do a collage or paint the bottom and that will be the very very first thing we do when we go to putting everything together so you'll need something that is big enough to cover the whole diameter of your vase or you'll have to collage you know uh, something or or just paint the bottom 
whatever you want. It is a little bit difficult to get the acrylic paint not to scratch off. And so if you paint it, you want to give it, you know, a couple of days to, to dry and firm up or maybe put some sort of a um, acrylic coat on, on top of it so as you work and are messing around with the bottom you don't accidentally scratch through uh, and have that show because there won't be uh, much you can do to hide that afterwards. Anyway, so I think that's enough on the bottom design. And what I am going to experiment with, I've done plenty of vases that I decorated totally with various papers, mostly rice paper. But for this one, I'm going to try out decorating with fabric. Now, I don't suggest that you jump into doing fabric. I have no idea if this is going to work out or not. It's an experiment. And so until we see whether this worked out successfully for me, I think you should wait before you try fabric as a background. But anyway, I have this beautiful fabric that is a Tim Holtz fabric, and I just loved it. And so you can see that I have already torn this, and this is going to be torn fabric, not cut fabric. I have torn this into two inch strips. Now, to get yourself ready for actually decorating your vase, I suggest you use paper rice paper or other paper and that you go ahead and cut it into either one inch or two inch strips. Do not go beyond two inches. You might have a problem getting it to lay flat if you do. But you can go ahead and cut it up. Now if you want the design to continue, you know, be a continuous design, you need to keep your paper in the order in which you cut it. For instance, this piece lines up with this piece, the piece that I tore out next to it. You see? See how my design continues? So if I'm gluing this one down, I'm going to want to make sure that the next one I glue down is the next one in the series and not not over here because then my patterns not going to continue and so it doesn't matter which order you stack up your fabric or from which side fabric paper uh, from which side you started cutting whatever whether you start from the left hand side of the sheet or the right hand side of the sheet stack the subsequent strips in the order in which you cut them. And what I do is I clip them together as I go so I don't make the mistake of losing the correct order. And that's very important. And so I encourage you, uh, you know, to use clips or, you know, large um, paper clips that could work or you know whatever uh, even if you have to staple it together uh, at one end that's better than winding up getting them out of order and then having a real problem uh, knowing you know how they go back together again so the, I'm going to use paper on the inside of my vase but I'm going to use fabric on the outside and so that's why let me point something out this is my uncut fabric and you just pretend this is a sheet of paper that you've decided to to work with and it has a design of some kind you want to make sure that your motif like this is very colorful it's very bright. I could in the end decide not to go this way because it does make it more difficult to see my 
imagery. You can see how this has already been fussy cut and if I put that down she's just really lost on that background and so I may wind up having to discard this idea altogether and let me show you the difference if I put this as my background you see how easy it is to see the motif against a background like that so you do want to be careful what you choose for your background you want to make sure that it doesn't overtake your foreground and um, so I may wind up needing to use this on the outside instead of the fabric and it wasn't something I thought about when I started tearing up my fabric and you can see how great those look on there compared to how they get lost over here and so I probably either won't be able to use the fabric after all but let's see what what these gals look like against the fabric now they're not cut out yet but because they're uh, much larger and more monochromatic they might stand out quite well against that fabric and if they do I will I have to fussy cut them out yet but if they do look really nice I'll go ahead and use the fabric but if they don't then I will be using this on the front rather than the inside and then I'll have to choose another paper for the inside I hope that makes sense color is really really important if if you don't choose colors that look good together that harmonize with each other from start to finish or if you use a background that's too strong and busy and your motifs are hidden you're not going to be satisfied with the end result so don't do it and uh, be very careful planning out you have to try to think of everything what are you going to use for the background what are you going to use for your motifs and then if I do uh, if I don't paint uh, my borders I usually use washi tape so I have a lot of washi tape to choose from but there again I want to be careful what what I use and what I've often used in the past is is some washi tape like this that's black and it has some kind of gold trim on it and that's always been very successful but I also didn't have a lot of washi tape on hand at the time and now I do so I might choose something different but you want you want the border to stand out from your background and you want your motif to stand out but having said that you also want everything to be very color coordinated and feel beautiful so when you lay things out if you don't like how it looks before you've done anything then by all means don't use what you laid out because it's not going to grow on you it's not going to look any better once you get it all made and so that's why this pre-plan process is so important to you know not just jump in and, and do something and then hope you can find the next phase uh, to look good with it you want to know ahead of time what are you going to use for your motif what are you going to use for your background and what are you going to use for borders and if you are going to use borders are they going to be washi tape that you use some other substance that you use or going are you going to paint on a border and so these are decisions that you need to make now and then 
join me in part three and we'll get started actually putting this all together and I will have my final decisions made and go from there. Okay, so that said, thank you for being with me. Thank you for watching this. And if you skipped around, please go back and watch the whole thing so you don't miss out on any of the tips that I've given along the way. And so I want you to have a very successful outcome. And this is very important that you design it properly from the beginning so that you're thrilled with it by the end. So that said, this is Miss Darling calling this a wrap. Bye-bye.